Coming up on this week's episode of the Ask Women podcast, we have sexy, sexy, sexy Susan Braddon on our show who advises millions and millions of men on how to have the best sex of their lives. Single men, men in relationships, anybody who wants to have a great sexual experience. And she is going to share a lot of that information with us. If you're a virgin, if you haven't had a lot of sexual experience, even if you're an expert, then this episode is for you. Keep listening. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the Ask Women podcast. It's your lovely hosts as usual, Kristen Carney and Marnie Kinris. And today we have a trusted hot sex advisor to millions, Susan Bratton on the show. Thanks for joining us, Susan. Hi. I'm so happy to play with you today. So are we. And that was a very (laughs) accurate description for Susan. I I came up with it on my own. Right. (laughs) (laughs) For like, I don't know how long I've known you for, but probably 10, 11 years, like a really, yeah, over a yeah, a really, really long time. And I, I will say this, she lives up to that title. She is hot. Aww. She's a sex advisor. I've even gone to her when I've needed advice. Uh, she introduced me to Susan Campbell, who was on our show about a month ago. Um, oh, great. Oh, she's been wonderful. And she's she's uh, yeah, been my therapist and, and with my husband. It's been absolutely fantastic. But yeah, but I want to hear about you. I've talked about you on shows leading up to this show, saying that you're coming on and that we're going to discuss sex. But I want to hear a little bit of background on you and what makes you this hot advisor to millions of people? Why do they come to you? And what is it that you know about sex that other people don't? I focus on passionate lovemaking techniques and bedroom communication skills. Most people who are in the sex business, what I've noticed is that there are lots of experts who are therapists or relationship coaches or they're experts who are kind of associated with the pornography industry. And I'm not a therapist. I don't, I I solve lots of people's problems. Don't get me wrong, but I'm not. Probably more than most therapists, to be (laughs) honest. Um, Well, that's one of the things is that uh, trusted hot sex advisor to millions. The reason it's millions is that for the last dozen years, I've been interacting with thousands and thousands of people every year instead of seeing one client for you know a session every week or every two weeks for right. six months or a year or five years or what have you. I'm kind of like the casting the wide net across the gender spectrum from you know 19 to 90 all over the world, different cultures. I speak to people in every in every religious pers- of every religious persuasion of every gender persuasion. And And it's interesting because I'm kind of like a dear Abby of sex. People pour their heart out to me, primarily in emails, Mm -hmm. and ask me for advice, and I give them the advice. And I get this kind of, I get a response like, oh, that worked, or okay, that worked, but here was the problem, or I'm afraid that won't work, and here's why. And so I've, I've had the ability to help thousands upon thousands of people over the years. And what that's done is it's actually helped me understand what works and what doesn't in relationship dynamics around the bedroom. And because I focus on passionate lovemaking techniques that actually make your sex hotter and more intimate and more surrendered and more pleasurable, What I'm doing is I'm looking for those things you can easily learn, like the little hinges that swing big doors, just the simple stuff that's like, oh shit, I never thought of that. It makes perfect sense. I'm going to try that tonight. Oh my God, that made my sex so much better. That's my sweet spot. And Okay. So tell us some of these things then. What are these little itty bitty things that somebody, like the guys who are listening to this show who may, you know, most of them are single, yep. um, but hopefully after listening to this episode and other episodes of ours, will be getting into sexual relationships with other people. Yep. So what can they do to stand out or to enhance the sexual experience with the woman that they're with? Well, that's the thing about being single is you, you kind of have this There's a pressure that you feel that when you finally get when you finally get someone you want to have sex with and you're going to have sex with them, it's it's a pretty loaded experience for a guy because due to the fact (laughs) (laughs) so true. Due to the fact that they're the masculine, they're it's kind of in many ways. Although this is happening less and less in younger people, where the woman is getting much more sexually aggressive, 
Generally, right. it's kind of the guy provides the masculine sexual leadership. He's supposed to know what to do. And when I talk to guys who are like, well, I don't need to learn any sex techniques because I don't have a girlfriend, I'm like, you're an idiot, first of all, because when you don't have a woman and you're not busy with a woman, you should be doing everything you can to learn as much as you can so that in that moment when she is in your arms, you're just you just have all this great confidence because you've got so many techniques and ideas that you can kind of feel your way with her. And it's almost like you have a, a menu of possibilities instead of just being, you yeah, know. That's kind of like, that's kind of like a doctor right. who's like, well, I don't have any patients right now. I'm just going to not learn anything about the human body. Right. Right. I'll Google it afterwards. <laughs> yeah. So going back to your original question, which is what, what are some of those little hinges that swing big doors? Let me get, I wrote, I wrote a book recently and it was a bestseller and it's called Sexual Soulmates because the kind of sex techniques I teach are those ones that make you feel like you two become one. You get lost in the bliss and the passion of surrender to your pleasure with each this other. This will You're never not... happen to me in my entire life because I can't surrender. <laughs> it's like, I feel like I'd be in a bad romance novel. How does someone who's pessimistic and like closed off like me get comfortable with these things? Yeah, it makes me more uncomfortable. Or nervous. Well, because... When you're with a person who, number one, really encourages you and r doesn't do anything, no matter what you do, they love it. They're encouraging you. They're giving you permission to be as sexy as you want, to express yourself the way you want to. They've got you. They know what they're doing technique-wise. You wouldn't have to do anything and you'd have a great time with them because you're being held in a safe and sexy place by that man. You, you want men only or are you open to Yeah, I think I'm anybody? a little uptight, so I'm, I'm good with just men. <laughs> so guys, so if you had a guy who was like, I've got you, Kristen, Go ahead, baby. Just let it go. Come for me. You know, whatever it might be. You know, we were going to talk a little bit about dirty talk on this episode. Yeah. You feel safe, held. Per you've gotten permission. You're getting encouragement. You're getting acknowledged when, when you know, baby, you're so sexy. You look so hot to me. I love your ass. Whatever it might be. What if though, like, I like to talk about minutia during sex? Well, one of the things that, that is helpful for you is getting all of the things off your chest and getting all that verbal kind of nervous energy mm -hmm. out first. So one of the techniques I have is called the soul made embrace. And it's the way a man can hold a woman so that it allows her to kind of let it all go, say what she needs to say, relax in his arms. He's holding her. She feels very close to him. And when he can calm down her nervous system, then mm -hmm. she can actually begin to go up that arousal ladder. A lot of guys think, and a lot of women think, a lot of people think that, oh, to turn her on, I've got to like dial her up. I got to start twingling her nipples and grabbing her crotch and moving her up into play. And that's the opposite of what women need. Women, that's, that's what testosterone thinks estrogen wants. Men being right. testosterone oriented, they're like, let's dial this shit up and hit the goal, right? But women being estrogen dominant you, you, our brains are kind of all over the map. You know, we're, we're the curvy river. We're, we're just chaos. <laughs> and so right. if a man knows how to take over our nervous system and calm us down and start the oxytocin flowing and make us feel like we're safe and held and approved of and good and all that stuff, then our natural desire begins to bubble up from within us and it allows us to feel comfortable being present with a guy such that when you're connected to him, when you're kissing him, when he's stroking your body, when he's going down on you, you feel comfortable, confident, and connected to him. Yeah, and more calm. Well, I, I do want to add in something because I think that was amazing information um, for the guys that are listening. I, so for me, I'll take two steps back. When when I was younger. I was a huge prude, very uncomfortable doing anything with anybody. I guess in my mind, I needed to have proof that 
this person was going to stay around. I don't really know the psychological reason why I was doing this, but mainly it was because I had a discomfort around things that were sexual. And I remember when I was backpacking and I was younger, I, I love was how making this is out your with this guy. Sex story. This is my, it's not my one sex story because I'm going to tell another one afterwards, but I want Susan to hear yeah. this because I think it's, I think it's important because, so I was really nervous and exactly like what you're talking about, like a woman being a little bit uncomfortable. And the guy that I was with sensed that because I tensed up a little bit and he looked at me and he said, if I'm doing anything that causes discomfort for you, just slap my hand. And he took my hand and he slapped his own hand and he said, and then I'll stop. We'll just stop and, and move forward in another way. And f- that permission had me calm down instantly. Yep. And that was my first so ever one my equivalent stand. would be a guy saying, listen, anything that I do that makes you uncomfortable, let me know. But also if you happen to queef, I'm not going to judge you. Like I like the bodily functions and the whole like weirdness of being a human just seems so real when you're having sex that I get so like, oh. Yeah, but it, but kind of what Susan was saying, and maybe it's not like an embrace that would help you. It would be saying it out loud. Because the other story that I was going to add on to was that when my husband and I first started dating, he was extremely verbal. And I wasn't comfortable with being verbal yet. And that got me to tense up. And because there wasn't an acknowledgement there, I don't know if I would have been open to him saying, oh, can I hug you now for five minutes while your <laughs> nervous system calms down? But I would have been open to him saying, you know what, I'm sensing something's going on and this is uncomfortable for you. And then something could have happened. So is is there like a little bit um, more guidance for men who who do come across situations like that with somebody that maybe they're not so communicative with, like if they're having sex with a woman for the first time, how they could still get her to a more comfortable place without jumping in and embracing right away? Yeah. So uh, let's parking lot something I want to tell you about later, which is we were going to talk a little bit about dirty talk and dirty talk styles. And I want to talk about that. So remember, (laughs) um, I have a technique called the sexual soulmate pact, P-A-C-T, like an agreement that you have. This is fantastic for one night stands as much as it is for people who've been together 3,000 nights. So the soulmate pact It basically is an agreement that allows you to say what you need to say without feeling weird saying it during sex. And a lot of people struggle to say what they need. And many people don't even say, they say, say, I can't even say what I need because I don't even know what I need. I just, it's almost like art. I don't know what I need, but I'll know when I see it, I'll, I, when I see it, I'll like it, you know, that kind of thing. So here's how the soulmate pact goes. There's two phases to it, essentially. The first piece, and this is like a conversation you have, hey, I really want to have great sex with you. And I was wondering if you would be willing to consider having this kind of agreement with me. So let me lay it out to you. First thing is that I want to really acknowledge that we're both, we're humans, but we're human animals. And for me as a woman, I'm going to, I'll do, I'll do the women's side. For me as a woman, and you could say for you as a woman, if you were the guy, for you as a woman, you are very cyclical in nature. Where guys like me, we are, you know, we're pretty steady state. But women, I know women go through cycles, just like you have a period and the moon cycle and all those kinds of things. And so what worked for you yesterday or last date we had, or the next date we have might not be what works for you today. And I really want you to listen to your body and tell me, what kind of touch do you need? You know, are you more like a kitten today or more like a tigress? You know, where are you on the scale? Is there anything that you don't want me to do? Any boundaries or limitations? Like we're going out to dinner after this, so maybe you don't want me to mess up your makeup or your hair or, you know, you don't mind. Hey, totally mess me up. You know, give me some cues as to how you're feeling, what mood you're in. And then as we go along, just give me any feedback you want, harder, faster, not there. Can we switch? You're on my hair, whatever it might. Could you rub my feet? Could you rub my neck? Whatever it is. Can you make it hotter in here or colder in here? Or can you turn the lights down? Or can I have a glass of water? Like anything and everything, you just tell me. Because all that I'm going to do when you tell me that is just say, thank you, baby. Got it, baby. I'm just going to acknowledge you and adjust and give you what you need because how could I know what you need when every day you are different? I am not going to presume I know what you need in any moment. And I really love feedback. I eat feedback up. It makes me give you more incredible pleasure. So every time you give me feedback, I'm going to thank you for it. And then you're going to realize how much 
I love giving you the exact pleasure you want in the moment. And I'm going to do the same for you whenever that comes up for me. Does that sound like a deal? Who's going to say no to that? Right. You know, I, in a, in a relationship, I could I could see myself being very open to that conversation. But I, but I'm just I'm trying to step into my prude shoes from before. Is there like a condensed version for people who don't know each other that well yet who may not be so exposed to that type of communication? And I do know that this is wonderful communication and everybody should practice this in every area of their lives where they're communicating expectations to the other person and hearing from the other side. But is there a a baby step for some people who may not be practicing that yet? And for other people on on the flip side who may be uncomfortable receiving it and could just shut down? Tell me everything you need and I want to know what it is anytime, any, any way. I'm not one of those guys that thinks they know it all. I want you to tell me anything you need. I'm going to do my best to make you happy. Oh, that's perfect. And then every yeah, time see, she I, tells think, you, I think that's sexy. Say, thank you. If she doesn't because say you you're welcome, though, her. it's very yeah, rude. She doesn't need to. <laughs> She doesn't need to. It's real. What you don't want her to do is get out of her turn on mind. Now, this is a great. This is actually a really great segue into the conversation, the parking lot conversation about dirty talk. So here's the thing: there are three types of. I'm trying to figure out how I can make this really simple. There are three types of lovers. Lovers who are when you're having sex, when you're in the sexual. When the, the throes of sex, in the sexy times, in those moments, when you're, you're thinking about your bodies, you're connecting with your partner, you are either a visual person, an auditory person, or what is called a kinesthetic or touchy-feely person. Now, you're all three, but you have one of those three modalities that is your lead modality. Then your partner has one of those three ways that they lead during sex as well. So let me give you an example. Let's just say the the girl is kinesthetic and the guy is auditory. And in the in their lovemaking, she gets disrupted by a lot of conversation. It kind of takes her out of her turn on state. What she's focused on is what her body is feeling, the sensations of the experience. Where for him, he'd love it if she was whispering dirty stories in his ear or telling him how good things felt. Like he loves a running patter of communication during sex. It turns him on even more. Or it could be that one of them is a visual person. They really like having sex in front of a mirror, wearing lingerie, the lighting being low like candlelight or by a f- making love by fires or things like that. So, or, 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 you know, sex positions where they can see each other and look into each other's eyes. Those people that really love eye contact during sex, they're visuals. And so it's very interesting to learn what kind of what kind of lover you are, visual, auditory, or kinesthetic, and what kind of lover your partner is. Because that actually yeah. has a downstream effect on what kind of dirty talk you do. Because a lot of people think about dirty talk as being what you do right during sex, but dirty talk can come before sex in the, in the way of, like, like, let's just say for the dirty talk guy with the kinesthetic girl, the auditory guy with the, with the kinesthetic girl, she might not like a lot of conversation during sex. So sometimes when they make love, she's focused on giving him that. So she gets on top of him and she's riding him and she's telling him a dirty story and she's just making it up as she goes along and telling him all this dirty stuff. You know, the cheerleaders are at the door and they're in, oh, coupless, crotchless panties and bras and they're coming in and we're all going to have sex with you. Oh, I'm going to let another girl jump on you. Here she goes. This is her, you know? I'm like just making shit up. Right. Right? Where for her, she doesn't really want that experience. What she wants is sharing what was sexy after the lovemaking date. So what she likes is when you're lying in bed together after she's had 10 orgasms and he's holding her and Fake he's news. telling her, oh yeah, you know. Fake when, news. What? Fake news. <laughs> <laughs> And orgasms are telling fake news. <laughs> no, it's real news. It, orgasm's a learned skill. We can okay. talk about that if you want. Yes. 
But anyway, uh, what she likes, because she doesn't really like to be auditorially interrupted during lovemaking, she loves to hear the sexy stories about what turned him on most during sex, after sex. Or she loves it when they have a date coming up and they get to talk and text dirty texting to each other during the day about what they're going to do to each other. Like that's hot for her. You know, so you can see that the different sexual styles, once you know them, you can really leverage them and take turns giving each other the different types of dirty talk that you like. And there's there's lots more we can talk about with dirty talk, but I'll I'll let you ask some questions now. But that's interesting, isn't it? Yeah. Yes, it is. Well, so mainly what I'm hearing from you is that, you know, once you do get into dating and relationships, and even in the very beginning stages of dating, you want to communicate about things so that you can give and receive from the person accurately. And you can start this on the first date with subtle communication tactics um, about expressing who you are, what you're looking for, and what you want. And you can continue from there. Uh, I I did want to dive into, which I you just you just said it right before you said, I'll, I'll let you ask questions. You were going to get into it. I totally forget what it was. What did you just say before? The orgasm thing? Yes. Oh, the orgasms. I, I did want to get into that because um, there's a lot of myths out there about women and orgasms and like a sexual experience from the woman's side. And I do want to take a quick break and then I want to come back and talk about this. I I want to understand more about the female orgasm, how it is possible to have multiple orgasms and how it's not a negative thing if a woman doesn't or is not able to have an orgasm. So um, I want you to sit tight and just think about that for a second. And then we will discuss that when we come back. Hi, I'm Omar. Hope you're doing well. Would love to hear from you. Hey, you look like a fun girl. Tell me, what are your hobbies? These are just some of the sad, tragic, boring opening lines you guys are using online. Well, stop being a fucking bore fest and start being interesting. Want to learn how? Come to your local banter expert. That's kristencarney.com slash datinghelp. She'll help you go from mundane to fundane. Only with better lines than that one, I swear. And Ask Women listeners get a very special discount because we know you're going to be wasting your money on her on Valentine's Day. Why do it here? Save 15% off at kristencarney.com slash datinghelp promo code valentine. That's 15% off. You heard it right. A big one five. That's one five at checkout with promo code valentine. This commercial was brought to you not by Dignity. Want to know the hidden meaning behind what women say and do? Then check out The Chictionary. It's the Wing Girl Methods manual that gives you a full rundown of all the things women say that confuse men written in dictionary format. Go get a copy of The Chictionary by going to winggirlmethod.com slash chick. That's winggirlmethod.com slash chick. All right, we are back with Susan Bratton, who is going to tell us all about the female orgasm, the myths, the truths, what's really going on. I I want men to understand what it is and how it works. Well, that was a big subject. I'm just trying to think about it. I know it's a big subject. I'm trying to like pick, like maybe maybe there's like some common myths out there that just aren't true. Like the fact that you said 10 orgasms. Yeah. (laughs) Well, but that's a big thing as well that like a lot of, I, I know a lot of women who have not, ever been able to orgasm or they're only able to orgasm uh, through clitoral stimulation and they're not able to have internal orgasms. So uh, I wanted to to sort of just hear from you about what you know and I'm not really sure which way to take this question, well, but I'll, I'd love for I'll you to start jump in. Since I can kind of narrow it down since, um, since I'm awkward in the bedroom. With the, the big O, I'm like my mom when I talk about sex, The big O, when that's going to happen, it takes a very, very long time for some women, not necessarily me, but probably me, since I'm speaking. Your friend. (laughs) Which is my friend. I'm talking for her. It takes a really long time and it starts to get uncomfortable when you have to say like, no, 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 don't move. Keep going. No, don't move. Don't move. Don't move. Keep don't moving. And like, you know, I, I almost feel like I brush it off because I don't want to inconvenience him, which sounds so absurd. All right. But I, I quickly go, okay, it's all right. Never mind. You go, you go. It's your turn. Like you. So 
Yeah. Okay. So you're denying that guy the biggest pleasure that man will have in his life besides the birth of his child and his wedding day. (laughs) Um, Men are biologically wired to give women incredible pleasure because it's super competitive to get inside the yoni. And so they know that we do the picking. And so it's important for them to do a really good job. Most men, there's a lot of bullshit stuff that I, that is, you were saying like, what are the myths? One of the myths is that men are, um, you know, greedy or don't care about women's orgasms. The only guy that doesn't care about women's orgasms is a guy that just hasn't been clued in yet, you know, and you gotta have, you gotta bring compassion. And there's guys that just, they just don't know stuff yet. Nobody's teaching us these things except people like me. And, you know, there's only so many of me and how do you find me and all that kind of stuff. So he wants to get you off. And in that particular case, you're kind of... But does he have the time? Does he have the time? That's the big question. What? Like, is that a turnoff if it's like going on and on and on and on? No, not at all. No, not at all. He is, he wants to do what it takes to make you come. And when you shut it down and short circuit it, it (laughs) takes away his pleasure. And yours. Your pleasure is his pleasure, number one. Number two, let's, let's go back to some, kind of some of the, the, bigger, the bigger things here. One is all women can come, all women can orgasm, number one. Number two, women can orgasm from lots of different types of stimulation and lots of different places. So you can, be, you can stimulate a woman's breasts and nipples and she can have an orgasm. A woman can have an orgasm from going down on a guy. There's erectile tissue in her throat, her mouth, her lips, her tongue. So she can actually get herself off giving him a blowjob. A woman can come from penetrative sex. So penis in vagina. She can come from anal sex. She can come from fingers inside her vaginal canal, stroking and pressing on her G spot, which is actually a G area. It's the cave, the roof of the cave. She can come from a spanking. She can come from a foot rub. She can come from just kissing. She can come from her abdomen being massaged. I mean, she can come from him talking to her on the phone. She can come while she's lying on the bed, waiting for him to get out of the shower before he even got to the bed. My palms are sweating. When they're massively <laughs> multi-orgasmic, we're like the multi, massive multiplayer gaming people of the universe. And all of it is just a learned skill. None of it you're born knowing. You're not born knowing how to have a clitoral orgasm. All these things are happy accidents or learned skills. It is a complete myth that there are some women, quote unquote, some women who can only come from clitoral stimulation. That's bullshit. Every woman can come from clitoral stimulation with the right kind of stimulation, with the right kind of experience, with the right kind of partner. And she can also come from all those other things I just said. So it's really one of the biggest things about orgasm is Getting turned on enough with a partner is super helpful or learning how to give yourself the sensations that turn you on. And what's interesting is that different women are wired in different ways. So for some women, anal sex is their best orgasm. For other women, having a guy go down on them and lick their clitoral structure is the orgasm they want. For some women, they can't orgasm unless someone's playing with their nipples at the same time they're doing something else, right? But that's just the beginning. Once you start that, you can start doing what's called orgasmic cross-training. You can begin to orgasm in a certain way and then add stimulation on in another way, and then you'll begin to orgasm from that too. Nike should have a brand for that. I know, right? (laughs) Cross-training sex. Exactly. (laughs) Yeah. So, I mean, the thing that's great about sex is that you just get better and better at it as you get older and older. Sex is the best. But that's the irony. That's the irony. It's like, you know, when you're not that getting older takes away any of your sexuality or beauty, but by the time I'm older, I'm going to be comfortable with sex, but then I'll be like, oh, I'm old. Look at me. Yeah. You never really feel that yep. way. <laughs> no, okay, you, don't, you don't. I'm 57 years old and I've never been hotter and I've never had better sex. 
That's amazing. So I don't think it's true. Um, I I had, and many women, you know, they want good sex, but they never quite figure out how to get it for years and years and years. And then they'll have one really good partner that kind of unlocks it for them. And then they know, oh, okay, I, I see where the, I see the map to that territory. Maybe I can find another partner that can help me do that. Part of what you can do as a woman is learn how to have good orgasms yourself. And a great way to do that is to start with a vibrator. Use a vibrator, start having some orgasms, then add in your fingers, learn, learn all, learn about your own anatomy, what gives you pleasure, use fantasy. You know, there's a lot of things that you can do to orgasm. Well, for, for men, because most of the people who listen yep. to this show are, are are men, what are things that they can do to explore? Because I, I get emails all the time from people saying, you know what, I'm very inexperienced sexually. If anything, you know, not even experienced at all. Yep. And the first time freaks them out. How How can they educate themselves so that when they do get into a, a, a sexual situation, they're not, they don't come in two seconds and they don't completely freak out and freeze up and, and then, you know, pour out to the woman, this is my first time having sex, be gentle with me. Like how, how can they kind of become masters without being masters? Yeah. Uh, Master (laughs) rate. Right. Right. That's true. Good answer. So a couple of things. There were, there were a lot of questions in there. So let me, yeah, sorry. (laughs) That's okay. Take them down one by one. So the first thing is that I have a really good video on my YouTube channel. If you just go to betterlover.com, I have a video called Losing Your Virginity. And I did it for people both really across the gender spectrum. Uh, And it's about what you can know and do the first time you have sex so that you feel really confident and comfortable and you have an incredibly pleasurable time. And you look back on that moment with fondness your whole life. So I think it's good to, you know, kind of just get that resource out there. But what you can do as a virgin is... Or someone who's not so experienced, who doesn't know how to be comfortable even with their own sexuality and just knows how to put a penis in a vagina or just knows how to, you know, finger a girl, like knowing the basics. Because you're talking about being a master lover who's exploring all of these zones. Is that a comfort level where he can then comfort somebody else to not be so awkward? So I know that there's, you know, no crash course on this, but is there a way to find that calmness in yourself through resources yeah. and information without actually having the experience to back it up. Yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's e- even if even if they're a virgin or someone who's only had sex five times. It's exactly what you just said. You answered the question yourself, which was fantastic. I know. So you're, just, you're a natural. <laughs> 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 and that is that if you're nervous, she's more nervous than you are. So take that masculine sexual leadership role and say, I want us to be as comfortable as we can. Let me know at any time what you need and let's just find our way together, our first time together. And let's take our time. There's no rush. Let's enjoy ourselves. And then you just start slowly. You just hold each other. You look each other in the eyes. You calm down. You kiss. You explore each other's bodies. Women like full body touch. A woman loves to have her body stroked and touched. So one of the things that you want to do is you want to start from the outside and work your way in. Uh, Imagine a bullseye. I call this my bullseye touch technique. So imagine a bullseye. What you're oriented to do as a guy is go straight for the bullseye. You want to shoot the bullseye. Don't do that in sex. That's the opposite. You have to actually manage the way that testosterone drives you to want to put your penis in her vagina immediately. You want to wait and get really turned on and get her really turned on so that she's practically begging you to have sex with her. And by have sex, I mean intercourse sex. So you want to work your way up very slowly. Give her time to get aroused. You want to rub her body. You want to rub her hands, her feet, her arms, her legs, her back, her belly, and then you want to touch her groin, her mons, the outer labia, her little sweet cheeks. Never, ever put your fingers or tongue inside a woman or on her clitoris until she offers it or you ask and she says yes. And you want to spend at least 20 minutes 
loving her yoni. Yoni is another word for what you might call vagina, but we don't use that term anymore because the vagina is just the canal that your penis goes in, the sheath. It's called a vulva. And that's a shitty word. It sounds stupid. So everybody's calling it a yoni now. <laughs> and a yoni is like okay. a Sanskrit word, like a tantric sex, a Kama Sutra type of word for the woman's genitals. And lingam is the penis word, in case you want that too. Lingam so and yoni? Just, that sounds like a great buddy, co- buddy comedy. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> lingam and yoni. Coming out in Netflix 2020. <laughs> Starring <laughs> Kristen and Marnie. <laughs> yeah. She's, she's definitely Yoni. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the idea being that you're going to massage her Yoni, you're going to lick her Yoni, you're going to put your fingers inside it when she invites you, you're going to do all those kinds of things. You can kiss her, rub her, play with her breasts. You can stop and take a break, have a glass of water, etc. And then give her your penis to play with too. If you're worried about premature ejaculation, one of the biggest things that really helps is not masturbating before you've had sex so that you actually struggle to have an orgasm. This depends on your age. You could masturbate before you have sex and then still be able to have an ejaculation during sex an hour later if you're super young. But the idea is that you don't want to rely on that. You want to be able to last as long as she needs you to so that you can make love to her and have intercourse and enjoy the process of it without worrying, without being in your mind, without worrying about, you know, oh, I've got to think about my grandmother's underwear so I don't come too fast. You want to be present with her. Or if you want to come too fast, that's what you think about. (laughs) (laughs) And so the best way to do that is to really slow down your own arousal. Just because your dick is hard doesn't mean you're, you're aroused. It just means your dick is hard. And so the thing that's really good to do is to have her, um, play with your penis with her hands. Let her get used to it. Don't expect that she'll go down on you unless she offers, and then you can say yes. Um, but the idea is that Once you actually have your penis stroked and squeezed and touched and loved, it's going to want to, it's going to want to ejaculate less quickly because you're actually engorging the entire structure. Your penis goes not just from your belly out, the part you see, but that's like about half your penis. The other 50% of your penis is up inside your body. So the slower you get yourself So it's really not as small as it appears. No, you know just how it, well, and plus it can really grow a lot. I mean, some guys, they call some guys showers and some guys growers, but um, it starts out very, very small, but it can get really big, especially when a woman is feeling down into his abdomen a little and maybe under his testicles a little in the perineal area and stroking all of that. It's nice to do all of this with organic coconut oil, because with organic coconut oil and a stack of towels, you could give her a beautiful yoni massage and really play with her. Just have her lie there, put some pillows under her legs, just get down there and play with her and ask her what feels good. She could do the same for you and play with your penis and feel down into that buried shaft of your penis. And that will give you a really nice, big, hard erection. And it will actually kind of tamp down that urge to ejaculate, helps you last longer, gives you more stamina. Yeah, okay, that's interesting because that would be the opposite of what most people would think. They say, don't touch it because then I'm going yeah. to come. So they focus for so long on pleasuring the woman until they're ready and they think it's like, okay, now it's long enough. If I came, it wouldn't be so yeah. horrible. So that's interesting to know because actually I got an email from somebody about a week ago and they were saying, you know, they spent with this this girl they'd been dating for so long. Um, they took seven weeks to finally become intimate with each other. And he was so excited and he wanted to pleasure her and he took like an hour and a half to like tease her and pleasure her. And he she didn't touch him at all. And then when they were about to have sex, he just went flaccid. And it became like a continuous thing for the two of them, um, which eventually led to them breaking That's up. That's performance anxiety. Uh, and, That's an even different thing. And, Okay, so that's not, but but even part of that, because he did spend so much time on yeah. her, it could have helped him more if he just said, okay, well, touch me for a second, well, right? Is that what second. I'm hearing from I you? I mean, it's nice when he gets a hand job, he gets a blow job, she's running her hands on his body, they do some 69. Okay. There's tons of things you can do. And 
not everything is penetration. People rush it. They okay. rush it. One of the reasons why people, there's this like urban legend that is so bullshit, which is some women can only come from clitoral stimulation, not from penetrate. Well, uh, if you just play with the clit and you never get her engorged, when you stick it in, it's not going to feel good. And of course, she's not going to come from penetration. It's it, You have to learn, many women, most women, the large majority of women have to learn how to have an orgasm from penetration. But really, what is better than a man and a woman together, if, if you're, if you're an opposite sex couple, same sex would be different things, but uh, the large majority of people, what is better than a man entering a woman and being so close to her and them feeling each other and the pleasure that they're co-creating in the moment and all that joy of connection? I mean, it, it, it's what our bodies are made to do. So it just takes practice and practice is fun. <laughs> Yeah, well, it sounds like you know the more the more you know, the better your sex exactly. will be. I, I did want to. I know that we were going to talk about dirty talk, but I, I to be honest, I'm finding that this would be more helpful uh, for our audience because we don't talk about sex that often. What you you touched on premature ejaculation yeah. um, that you said? Oh, that's not this. It's premature ejaculation. Performance anxiety. <laughs> A performance anxiety. Sorry, that's yeah. what you said. Performance anxiety. Mm-hmm. So how can we stop that? How because it's for women as well. Like Kristen was talking about it at the beginning of the show. She had performance anxiety yeah. as well, which completely stopped her experience. So it it, it goes on both sides because I know that I sometimes get into my head about like, ah, this is taking too long. And I, I apologize to my husband saying, sorry. And then that, you know, gets in my head and it takes away what I've already built up. So ha- how can people soothe the performance anxiety? And, and not just people who are in relationships because most of the people are not in relationships who listen to this show. How can can you do it on your own without having to bring the other person into the equation? It's so simple. Performance mm. anxiety oh. occurs when you're in the past or the future instead of the present. <laughs> when you're okay. worried about coming, when you're projecting your fears, when you're out of your body and in your head and you're generating anxiety, So if you're thinking about what happened last time or you're worried about what's going to happen, you're creating that anxiety. You need to stop and just start to feel your body again and reconnect with your partner. The goal isn't orgasm. The goal is fun, pleasure, sensation, intimacy, and connection. The orgasms will come if you can stay in that state. And it's like a mindfulness practice, like meditation. Every time you find yourself spinning out, bring yourself back to your partner and the moment. What's something that they can say to themselves in that moment if they're looking for something to latch onto that would get them to be back in the present? What's feeling good to me right now? Why am I happy to be with this person? Mm. Mm -hmm. Kristen, would that help you? Lots of thoughts. Would that help you become more calm? Uh, Yeah, maybe, but I really kind of was struck by what you said with the uh, being in another... uh, I'm basically either the past or the present because uh, I do stand-up comedy and whenever I'm having performance anxiety of stand-up, it's always because I'm thinking of stuff that's gone wrong before or stuff that yeah. could go wrong in the future. And so that exactly. kind of just gave me like my own little like brain O or something because that is so true. Um, but I don't know really anything that I can implement that seems realistic for me to actually help myself. You know, put I can your say all those things. On the sensation. Right, right. So put your attention where the action is. Yeah. What are you feeling? And how can the next thing that you do feel even better for yourself and your partner? You just be in the moment with them. It's precious moments. It really is. Yeah. Do people get still get um, performance anxiety in relationships? Yeah. They do? Yes. Yes. All the time. What are some things that we would be surprised about that people come to you for? like mainly women of, of fears they have, anxieties, just I, you, I'm sure you've heard it all. What would be shocking for the guys to, to hear? There are some pretty big categories. One of them is that women have a lot of health issues around their pelvic region. They're too tight. They're too loose. They don't like the smell. They have yeast infections. They seem to be allergic to their partner's ejaculation. 
they're embarrassed about their the way they look. Their labia is too long. They're you know like they're they're judgy or they have pain, pain from childbirth, a, uh, episiotomy. Uh, you know, like there's just so many so many problems. I'm dry, lubrication, things like that. So those are really common things that women come for. Other things that women come for often to me are my partner is boring. My partner got fat. Um, my partner is lazy. My partner is broke. My partner has pissed me off, you know, like all those things that make sex not good. Other things would be a big one is boredom. My partner's not inventive. He wants only to do the same old things all the time. That's right. Women require a lot of sexual variety. A turned on woman is a rat, has a ravenous sexual appetite and it scares guys. And so women hold it back. They don't feel safe and held and approved of and given permission to just like let it rip. So there's some frustration with a lot of women where the guy is more conservative or he's less experienced or he's just vanilla and they want to try new things. Um, A lot of women ask me about vibrators. Is it going to blow out my clit? You know, am I never going to be able to have an orgasm from like regular sex, quote unquote, things like that, which is not true. Your sensation comes back. I mean, this is amazing. I, I, I don't, you don't need to continue with Liz. That, that, that's amazing information for men to hear that women have so many insecurities, so many concerns, and a lot of turnoffs that men may not be aware of. So I think that that's oh, super and helpful. And I, like I would porn love stars. Oh. What, tr- getting all their sex techniques from porn, treating them like porn stars. Like, all he wants to do is have anal sex. Why? You know, like they don't want that and that pisses them off that they're grossed out by it. Like, I know he just jerks off to porn all the time and it's pissing me off, you know, like that kind of thing. They don't like it. Yeah. Well, so how how can the guys listening take this information, especially like, like that information, that women don't like to be treated like they porn stars? Not. Because men, but it's confusing because... They also hear that we want to try new things. We don't want it to, you know, become boring and dull. And that there's multiple places that you can touch us on our body that can make us come instantly. Not so instantly. How, I did not say instantly. Not instantly. <laughs> but that can excite, us, can excite us and arouse us. And we have all these pleasure spots. So how does how does a man avoid treating a woman like a porn star but still give her an exciting experience? Because I I think maybe a little bit more detail on that might be helpful for guys. And earlier on, you said, what are the things that are the little hinges that swing big doors that that are like super easy? Well, I'll I'll blend that. I'll answer it. I'll answer your question with those things because that's what it is. The first one is set up the environment so that the woman can be fully relaxed. What I call that is setting the lover space. If you want a woman to surrender to her pleasure with you, if you want her not to have performance anxiety, if you want her to have multiple orgasms, if you want her to be comfortable and happy, the very first thing is, is she hot or cold? Don't have her be either. Make the temperature nice. Make the lighting nice. Orange lighting. Get one of those party bulbs, the orange party bulbs for your bedroom and put it in your lamp so that there's a warm orange glow in the room. It makes us look prettier, and then we feel sexier. Light a candle. But then do we we see that and go, oh, he has like weird sex things? No, I don't. I think, I don't, I mean. Like he's like, okay, so everyone knows, everyone who knows who listens to this podcast. (laughs) This is like, no, that's why I'm advising it. (laughs) And Seinfeld's like, I can't have a threesome, then I have to get a shag carpet and all like a weird mustache and all that like weird stuff. And so that's how I see it because I'm a comic. I have a comics brain. So I would see the orange bulb and go like, ooh, like, ooh, he he went to a store and bought an orange bulb just for this moment. Um, how do you... I would look at that and be like, man, I'm with a pro. Oh, okay. I'm with a guy that really cares about my pleasure. Okay. Yeah. I would go, oh, so, he's a weird sex guy. That's kind of how I would see it. But it's not like you walk in and there's like an orange bulb sitting on the table and he's like, let me just screw <laughs> well, this that would in. Be hilarious. You know? <laughs> let me that just would be really funny. Let me do, I, I know you probably that. would appreciate that more. Let me just <laughs> let me just change if this. I, can you, if I can you hold the ladder to for me? And not take everything super seriously. Like if he's was with someone like me, because there's women like Marnie and you that are more open sexually. And then there's people, women like me, believe it or not, that um and I'm I make it sound like I'm worse than I am, kind of for the show. I'm not as awkward as I'm making it sound. But if I were to walk in 
and that made me laugh, I wouldn't want him to get mad at my response to it. And I've seen guys do that. I think you uh, have an enormous sexual appetite and you have put up the biggest roadblocks <laughs> because you're waiting for someone to tear them away and to take you down mm-hmm. and to fuck you into submission. <laughs> and um, I think I, so yeah, too. And I think all of this is artifice and bullshit because you want it so badly <laughs> that you put up the biggest roadblocks possible. So it's going to take quite a confident man to fully satisfy so Basically, you. I have Trump's wall in my vagina, essentially. Yes. It's like that big of a wall. Right. And, and the thing is, you're, you're actually really doing a disservice. I, I really feel in a lot of ways, like you've kind of taken on this mindset and it's what you're reflecting out to the world. And I, I would prefer to, I would offer to you that being a little bit more vulnerable, like you're just so afraid for whatever reason, that vulnerability is really one of the most erotic things that there is for for lovers. Lovers are two people who come together to give each other pleasure and connect as one. You know, we're so lonely in our lives. We're born, we're kind of born alone. We've got to live in our bodies alone. But that moment of passionate lovemaking when the two of you merge into one and you don't know where you start and he ends, that is like a salve to your soul that is unparalleled in our lifetimes. And so I would just maybe encourage you to try and remove some of those roadblocks yourself by being more vulnerable about your fears with a lover. Right. Well, I'll tell you, I have two or three drinks, and I am you. I am Lucy Lucy Goosey. Goosey. But sober. Yeah. No, but I think that's really helpful advice that that Susan's providing. But it's also helpful to the guys that are listening to the show. If if they're experiencing this kind of discomfort as well, it's it's basically you're saying just be easier on yourself and be a little bit more vulnerable and reframe the way that you talk about things and think about things and slowly they'll adjust. But also if they are dating or about to sleep with somebody who does experience what Kristen is experiencing and just being aware that some women do have this anxiety as well around sex and sexual performance and doing embarrassing things. Yeah, a lot, a lot do. Um, Most people do. Yeah. And even if you yourself are not as experienced, it's really just being okay with that and just saying, you know what, this might make us giggle a little bit, but I, I just want to provide really nice lighting for us to have this moment. You know, it was really therapeutic for me and it had nothing to do with actually, you know, inter- having intercourse, but I went to a Korean spa and everyone's naked there and I had to just be naked with everybody else. It was incredibly oh God, helpful. yeah. I was like, oh wow, she has a giant bush too. Like it didn't make me feel weird. I just, I did feel uninhibited and I don't have a huge giant bush. I'm just kidding. Um, Well, right now I do, but it was a really good exercise for me. So if someone's uncomfortable in their own skin or something like that, I think being around people that are comfortable in their own skin without any pressure, like at the Korean spa, at least where I was, there was no pressure to have sex with anyone. So it was a comfortable space and it's, you know, of course divided between men and women, but it was a comfortable space for me to be naked. I was with some girlfriends and I was just like, well, this is it. There's no more hiding. Yeah. Yeah. So if someone's awkward like me, I think that's actually a really good idea. Yeah. And I I do know that Susan provides advice for people who are at the very beginning all the way up to the top, top, top of people who are super experienced. Mm -hmm. And I want people to go check out Susan's materials. And um, I'm sure that she'll help me in pointing them in the right direction. But I'll provide a link uh, winggirlmethod.com slash Susan B. And that link will take you to unbelievable information that is going to improve, help, and enhance your sex life. Um, again, that's winggirlmethod.com slash Susan B. And you'll be a, a sexy rock star by the end of, of, of consuming the information that Susan has to share. Susan, thank you so much for coming on to our podcast and <laughs> helping Kristen. <laughs> we didn't know it was going to turn out to be well, a, yeah, a Kristen it, sex it turns, therapy session. Yeah, it turns into like <laughs> special ad sex with Kristen. <laughs> but I think it's really good for, I know, I, people know Kristen who listen yeah. to this podcast and they already assume she's going <laughs> to feel this way. But it's it's nice to just 
hear the things that she thinks yeah. in her head because it's not just it isn't. It's, there, there are so many women. I, I think those things in my head as well. And I'm married, you know, and they, those insecurities pop up from time to time because as Susan was saying, like I've now had children, so my vagina is different and I've, you know, everything changes and there's new insecurities that pop up. But overall, what I heard um, from this podcast was that communication is key and really not being offended by somebody else's discomfort or by their sexual preferences and just being open to hearing that other person and then sharing where you come from as well. And then you'll get to somewhere sexy together. Uh, Susan, thank you for being on this podcast. Kristen, thank you for opening up and being so honest and not passing out during yeah. this show. I appreciate You're you staying welcome. on the phone with us uh, and not giggling <laughs> too much, myself, which is great. I was times. expecting a lot more. <laughs> I know, I could tell I could tell you were at certain points. Anyway, you guys are both wonderful, wonderful women. Um, if anybody wants to, again, contact Susan and get in touch with Susan, please go to wingrowmethod.com slash Susan B. New episodes of the Ask Women podcast come out every Thursday at 5 p.m. Pacific. Please go and subscribe to our show and share our show with other people. Uh, You're doing a wonderful service to other friends who need this advice as well. We'll see you guys next week. 